New Tool Day Tuesday, where I share with you guys a unique or useful tool that I myself use that I think you might be interested in. Now, today's tool is not unique in the aspect that, well, it's just going to be talking about a multimeter. But multimeters can be extremely useful, and the one I'm going to present to you is actually a really good multimeter, and it's a good bang for the buck. Now, anybody that walks through my shop will see I have a good selection of multimeters. In fact, hanging on my pegboard back here is three different meters. I have an OTC over here here, which used to be my go-to meter, but it's been giving me some problems, which is why I bought this meter here. I have an AC clamp right here, which is also a voltmeter. Its ranges are very narrow, but if you're working with AC and you're working with your mains, it's a great meter for that. And then I have a really, really cheap one hanging right here. And it's just your standard, you know, kind of general multimeter that works really well. And they're really inexpensive. I believe you can actually buy those for less than 10 bucks at Harbor Freight. Today, we're gonna to be talking about the 1000A AC-DC Ames multimeter. Now you could buy this meter at Harbor Freight and a full disclaimer, I am not affiliated with Harbor Freight in any way. I just happen to have one that's relatively close by and I buy a lot of tools from them because I have really good luck with their tools. Now this meter is chocked full of features and options and this is more of a professional meter. It's a little bit high in the price range for the DIYer as it comes in right around 99 bucks at Harbor Freight. But if you do this professionally, this meter is actually priced very cheap. Some of its competitors are gonna cost you well over $200. Now, one thing I was pleasantly surprised to see that this meter had was a built-in non-contact voltage detector. Now, basically what that is, is one of these guys built into the end of the meter. Now, if you don't know what these guys are, they basically have a little button on them, and when you get them near voltage, they will sing and let you know that the current is live in that particular device. I have an extension cord here on my workbench. The other end is plugged in. We will take this pin, get it close to the extension cord, and you can see it's going to let us know that there is live power there and it's singing and lighting up to let us know. And as we pull it away, it quiets down. So this can be really handy if you're trying to work on, let's say, an outlet, and you want to confirm that there is no power going to that outlet. This meter has one built right into the tip of it. So as long as I have the dial set to non-contact voltage, if I get it close to the extension cord, it's going to sing and let us know that there is current there. There's also a light right here that flashes as well, and we know that that is live. If there was not any voltage detected there, it wouldn't sing at all and it wouldn't light up. It is also an amp clamp, which means we have this funny looking clamp at the end. And this is really handy because we can measure amps or current without actually having to splice into the circuit. Basically, we just need to put the live wire through the center of here and it'll measure it. Now, on the end of this extension cord, I have a space heater currently on <laughs> and it's hot out here. So I want to make this quick, but we're going to put the clamp around the power wire and you can see that we are pulling 11.35 amps on the display. So these are really handy to have because you can work through a fuse panel with this clamp and see how much power each line is pulling. It is an AC and a DC clamp, so you can also do this with DC current as well. And like any other multimeter, it will measure voltages, again, both DC and AC. My probes are plugged right into the mains of this extension cord. We're measuring 120 volts AC. This meter also measures hertz. And again, that is something that not a lot of people will use, but if you're working on generators, this comes in really handy. Some of the older generators, you have to adjust the speed to put out the right hertz. And it's really nice to have a meter that can measure those hertz so you can adjust them to 60, which is what we use over here in the States. Now I have the meter plugged directly into the main and you can see we're 59.99 hertz, which is pretty much near perfect. The meter also measures resistance, which also means it can check continuity, which is really handy if you're testing switches. It has an audible alarm and resistance gets very low, so you can tell if that switch is working. And something you won't find on your lower end meters is a capacitance checker. Now this capacitor is off of my air conditioner. I know it's bad because I just replaced it. There's actually two capacitors and one in this guy. It has a fan capacitor that should be right around five microfarads. It also has a starting capacitor for the compressor that should be around 70. I know that the fan is fine, so we're gonna measure that one and show you. We should see five microfarads on the fan. And let's see, common is here, here's the fan. And if you look down there, it should see five microfarads. And that's 4.968, 4.97, which is close enough. And then if we measure the other capacitor that's built in here, which is for the compressor, it should be 70. And you're gonna see we're not gonna get 70 on it. It's 11.03. And the compressor would not start with this capacitor. I used this meter to check it. I put a new capacitor on it and the air conditioner has been running just fine. 
Now this multimeter is chocked full of features and to keep this video short, we're not gonna go through all of them. It does have a backlight. It also has a little work light on the end. So when you're measuring amps and things like that, you need to use a clamp. It has a little flashlight built right into the end, which is pretty handy. And obviously the backlight is awesome because there are many times where you're basically in the dark and you need to see the meter. And with that backlight, you can do so. The meter, like I said, runs right around $100, and I did buy it from Harbor Freight. I will put a link down below in case you're interested. If you like these types of videos, please like and subscribe. Take a look at some of my other videos, and at the very least, you might be entertained.